Alhamdulillahi <laughs> وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا الأنبياء إمام مرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام The last, the manifest, the hidden the one who has might and power over all things all praises are to Allah who sent his most beloved one Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi sallatu was salam as the mercy to the universes and may all peace and blessings be upon the Sultan of the Prophets the Imam of the Messengers the master of the first and the last the pride of the universes the grandfather of Hassan and Hussein and blessed companions especially upon the four Khulafai Rashidin Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Usman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya yuhal mu'minun, O believers, welcome to you on this holy day of Juma, and welcome to you on the first Juma of the month of Zulkaida. O believers, treat the Juma day with respect. Hazrat Ali Karamallah Wajha was saying in his khutbah what he heard from the Holy Prophet والسلام, saying when Juma comes the shaitans they go to the markets with their flags early in the morning sit at the door of the masjid and record that so and so came at the first hour and so and so came at the second hour until the Imam comes out when a man sits in a place where he can listen to the where he remains silent and does not interrupt he will receive a double reward if he stays away sits in a place where he cannot listen silent and does not interrupt he will receive the reward only once if he sits in a place where he can listen to the khutbah and look at the imam but he does not remain silent he will have the burden of it 
If anyone says to his companion sitting beside him to be silent, when the Imam is given the khutbah, he is guilty of idle talk. Anyone who interrupts during the khutbah, he will receive nothing on that Juma day. Inshallah Rahman, we will show the proper care to this Juma that is being taught to us by Shahi Mirdan. O oh, believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us in the Holy Quran, as for whoever passed the limits and preferred the life of this world, surely his abode, his home will be the fire. And as for whoever feared to stand before his Lord and he controls the desires of his ego, surely his abode, his home will be the garden. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Have you seen the one who takes as his ilah, his own desire? Then would you be responsible for him? Or do you think that most of them, they hear or they reason? They are like cattle. No, they are even more misguided in their way. And in another ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the one who purifies his ego, he has succeeded and makes zikr of Allah and prayers, but you prefer the life of this world, even though the hereafter is better for you and it is longer lasting. And the Imam of the Haramain, Sayyidina Muhammad is saying in his hadith sharif your worst enemy is your ego that lives between your two sides inside your body. And the Prophet of Allah speaks the truth. O oh, believers, the ego is our enemy. That nafs, that ego that lives inside of us, it is our enemy. And as the Holy Prophet is saying, it is not only our enemy, it is our worst enemy. More than any government, more than any state, more than any conspiracy, our biggest enemy is our ego. Because falling into the tricks and traps of the ego, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Holy Quran, it leads us to the fire. And the ego and the desires, they want us to worship them. They want us to take them as an ilah. And if we do that, then we lose the title of human beings and we become worse than animals. So many foolish 21st century Muslims today who have no connection to the Holy Prophet who have no connection to his inheritors, who have no connection to the 1,400 year old living tradition that is the inheritance of the Rasulullah They are running around saying that in this time we have to physically fight we have to go to war. They are running to fight an outside enemy without fighting their inside enemy first. Firstly, there is no fighting in this time without a Khalifa who is the inheritor of the Rasulullah So whatever fighting they are claiming to do, it is without the permission of the Prophet of Allah and without the permission of the friends of Allah. But even more than that, there is a more important fight that must be fought. Who is saying this? This is not our own idea that we are speaking on the mimbar. No. These are the words of the Holy Prophet as our Shaykh is teaching us. The Holy Prophet is coming from the war. He came to his masjid. He sat and the Sabi Kiram came and they sat. He said to them, now we are turning from the small jihad to a greater jihad, to the bigger jihad, from a small war to a bigger war. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we are just coming from war. So many Sahabi died, so many are wounded, so much wealth disappeared. Can there be a bigger war than this? He said, yes. The war that you are going to make against your ego, against your nafs, that is the biggest jihad that you are going to make.
And Shaykh Afani is explaining this hadith to us more, saying, And that jihad, it must continue until you enter to the grave. You cannot let it go. You cannot say, oh, today I fix myself. My ego is complete, so I'm going to do as I like. You cannot do as you like. The more you are completing your ego, the more you are going to see Allah's order becomes more detailed to you. You watch every word that you say. You watch every step that you make. This is the reason for tariqat. Tariqat is not for you to eat each other. Tariqat is not for people to sit next to each other and hate each other. It's not that. Tariqat is to teach you, to take you from the lower self and to bring you to the highest station. If you are not doing that, if you are not doing that, then it doesn't matter what kind of sheh you have. People didn't listen to the Holy Prophet They ended up in Jahannam. Abu Jahil didn't listen to the Prophet. So many Abu Jahils didn't listen to the Prophet They were sitting in front of him. They were watching him. They didn't listen to the Prophet Who they listened to? Their ego. To their ego, to their shaitan. And in the end, they are in Jahannam. Right now that we are talking, the fire is burning them. Just like one awliya, Hazrat Bulleh Shah, is saying in his poetry. You read so many books trying to become a scholar, but you never read the book of yourself. You run to enter into every masjid, but you never try to enter into your own heart. Every day you go to war against shaitan for nothing because you have never gone to war against your ego. Oh, Buleh Shah, you are trying to grab what is in the sky, but you never caught hold of what is inside of you. So this struggle, this jihad against the ego, this is what we are here for in this life. If we leave this life without conquering our ego, then we are going to leave this life as the losers. And we have to understand how dangerous an enemy this ego is. That ego is so dangerous that even the Holy Prophet والسلام, the one who was a prophet when Adam was between water and clay, the one who passed beyond Sidratul Muntaha, the most honored one in divine presence, he والسلام, was praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Ya Rabbi, do not leave me to the hand of my ego even for the blink of an eye. What about us? And the only way to conquer the ego, the only way to fight the ego, the only way to gain mastery over the ego is to submit and to follow someone who has already fought and they have won that battle. Today's Muslims, they don't want to follow anyone. Today's Muslims learn the Alif Bata, they learn a couple of surahs, they listen to a couple of lectures, and they think that they are the biggest scholars and saints that have ever appeared on the face of the earth. They even dare to criticize the earlier scholars and the earlier saints. They think, why do I have to follow someone? Don't I have a brain? Don't I have my own intelligence? Don't I have books I can read? So their egos have already conquered them. If a man found himself in the middle of a war with the bullets flying and the bombs falling, and all the minds to save him. The battle against the ego, it is more dangerous than the war zone. And may Allah save us from that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the inheritors of the Rasulullah as the that battle and they are the generals who are there to guide mankind towards the same victory.
And the only way to fight this ego is to submit to the Shah. Without full submission, the fight against the ego cannot be won. You know how to submit to a corporal, not even to a general if you are in the army. You know how to submit to a sergeant. But in the spiritual war, the ignorance of 21st century Muslims have reached all the way up to Sidratul Muntaha and they say, no, we're not going to submit to anyone except for Allah. Who are these ones teaching you to submit to themselves? They're teaching you how to submit to Allah. But you cannot enter into the divine court of La ilaha illallah until you enter into the divine court of Muhammad Rasulullah. Our shaykhs are teaching us how to enter into the court of the Prophet As Sahib al Sahib is saying, Tariqat, it is submission. If you have submission, then you have Tariqat. If you don't have submission, then you don't have Tariqat. You can claim as much as you want that you have Tariqat, you don't have Tariqat. Your Tariqat is according to your ego then. You are making your Tariqat according to your ego. That's why in today's people, everywhere there are tariqats. People are dancing, eating and sleeping, saying, Tariqat, we are in tariqat. Tariqat teaches you how to work against your ego, nothing else. Either you are working for Allah, or you are working for your ego. If you are working for Allah, then leave the desires of the ego aside, because the enjoyments of this world within the borderlines of Islam saying, do this and do that, it is okay. But if you don't know the limit, then you're going to pass out of that limit and then you are going to think, yes, we are still number one. But you are not. You are already out. You have already fallen out of tariqat. So this road of fighting the ego, this road of submitting to the shaykh, this road of walking in the way of Allah, it is not easy for the ego. It is very easy for the spirit because the spirit is always in submission. The spirit is always in the will of Allah. But there is no other choice. And the reward for walking this road with sincerity and submission, it is a tremendous reward. The Holy Prophet is saying in his Hadith Sharif, the true mujahid is the one who battles his ego to become obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal. And for the person who does that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us how he will call him in the next life, saying, O oh you, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim O oh you, nafsul mutma'in, the nafs that is satisfied with his Lord, return to your Lord, that you are pleased with your Lord, and he is pleased with you. Enter amongst my righteous servants. Enter into my garden. Sadaqallah. Our egos, so that when we pass from this life, we can hear our Lord saying that call to us. Amen. Astaghfirullah. 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 Lazim alazim. La ilaha illa wa alhayr kaimu. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك الحمد لله لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنت من الظالمين سبحة كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة وروه سبحة كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة وروه سبحة كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة وروه